All right, today we're gonna to start something kind of brand new, uniform circular motion. And we've talked about kinematics, we've talked about forces, energy, and momentum. And now we're gonna dive into the land of moving in circles. I was gonna call this unit going in circles, but I thought that might kind of feel defeated. So we're just gonna keep it uniform circular motion. So first thing you have to do, draw a nice circle. And you know, sometimes I draw a good circle, sometimes I got halfway around the circle, I almost got all the way complete, and then I kind of messed up right there. Don't lose sleep over that. So. We're gonna talk about the parts of a circle. So we're gonna go straight from the center of the circle and we're gonna call that the radius R, just like that. And one thing I want you to picture, um, whenever we're talking about circular motion, usually it's pretty obvious when you're gonna use it because you'll have some kind of circle and something going around a bank curve. Well, I don't think on your AP test you have any bank curves, but something going around a circle, a racetrack, a bucket whirling in a circle. So it'll be pretty obvious when you're gonna use uniform circular motion. You can use this as a tool or sometimes concepts of energy or even angular momentum, which we'll talk about more in the future. So right now draw a circle. We have the radius right there. And let's picture that childhood uh, merry-go-round that you might go to the park and see where you spin it, it kind of whirls around. And let's say it's gonna whirl counterclockwise this way, just like that. And actually, I'll just draw the little, boom, it's going counterclockwise, just like that. And let's say at one moment, you're right here, and then later on, you're right here. And you still have the same radius. It's not like you're on the merry-go-round and all of a sudden the radius is getting longer or shorter. And um, uniform circular motion, so we're not gonna have like ellipses or any crazy shape or anything like that. And so just a nice circle for today. Okay, so let's say you started at point A right here, and then you started your stopwatch and they gave you a push, and then you ended up at point B over here. And you can picture the arc length, is this part right there. If you wanna think about it in terms of pizzas, that would be the pizza crust. So this is called the arc length, and I'm trying to color coordinate it, arc length. And this is your radii, that is not changing. And then another key piece of information we wanna know about is your angle that you swept through, swept through theta. So we have the arc length, we have the radius, and we have the angle. And there is a formula that relates all three, and I'm going to give that formula to you right now. S equals R times theta. And one little thing to kind of note is that when we move in the counterclockwise direction with circles, we generally kind of count that as positive. And if you want to think about like the I'm smearing right here, if you want to think about kind of like the unit circle, that's totally a-okay -okay because the unit circle kind of opens up positive that way. So this is your arc length of the circle arc length, measured in meters because it's a length, and then we have the radius, which is constant, radius, so that'll be measured in meters as well. Now I know you've been using degrees all year, and I said make sure you switch to degree mode. In uniform circular motion, it's oftentimes very helpful to be in radians, so we're going to talk about that right now, that'll be your theta, your angle, angle theta, and it'll be measured in radians. And we'll talk more about that in the future. But now a couple little notes. Um, if, you, if they ever say revolution, like they say one revolution. So that means they went from here all the way around the circle. If you want to get that in terms of radians, we know that one revolution, that is two pi radians. Because there are two pi radians in a circle. And they'll, do, they'll call it rads, R-A-D-S. So don't let that bother you. And you could say, you know, when I was in math class, all I ever needed to know for conversions in one revolution, there are two pi rads. And if you want to say, hey, in a half revolution, there are pi rads, it doesn't really matter. Just make sure when they're doing your formula for this right here, your angle theta should be in radians. So they said, oh, you know, we could do one right here. You did three revolutions and you had to do a little conversion right there. You'd say, okay, in three revolutions. And I know the math fact that in one revolution, there are two pi rads. Rev on top, rev on bottom. Whoosh, whoosh. Now three times two, I do my math. That'd be six pi rads in three revolutions. So just make sure when you're doing your formulas, you're gonna be in radians and meters and things like that. We're gonna call this equation number one, okay? So we're just gonna do two other things that we're gonna walk through today and they kind of follow all from equation number one, the parts of the circle here. So let's redraw equation number one. S equals R times theta. And we're gonna take it up a notch. I'm gonna take the derivative of both sides. So take d dt of the left-hand side here. I'm gonna take d dt of the angle right there. One little thing, um, r is just a constant because like we said, the radius is not changing, so that's just gonna be out front of our derivative right there. So think about this. We've never done it with arc length before, but it's the derivative of arc length, which is in meters, so that's meters, 
per second, a meter per second. So you may have guessed it, a meter per second. That is your arc velocity, Vt. And they'll call it your tangential velocity or V tangent. It's just how fast your arc length is changing. And we'll talk more about that once we redraw the picture. The R just comes along for the ride, so I'll put R right here. And one little thing here, d theta dt, that's the change in radians per second, radians per second. That is a Greek symbol they use right there. They use lowercase omega, just like that. That's your angular velocity. So just to clarify, put a little cloud of science around here. I'm gonna try to do this all in one take. I might not even edit it. You might get all of my ums. I say um too much sometimes. So this is how fast your arc length is changing. Your arc velocity, which is different, or they might call it linear velocity. I've heard it called that before. And this radius is just the radius r. And this is your angular velocity, how fast your angle is changing. Just like that. The keys, arc velocity, it's in meters per second because the arc is in meters. And then angular velocity is in radians per second. Because remember the angle is gonna be in radians. So very, very helpful to know this. And let's just draw a circle here. I'm gonna draw a nice circle right here. I always like to reference back to circles. And I make it look re very easy. I'm, I'm gifted, I don't know. So draw your radius. And if you're like, Laurent, that's not that great of a circle. I know, it's the best I can do today. So we have this right here, and here's how we're gonna differentiate. A lot of people are like, I'm mixed up. I don't know this V versus that omega. It doesn't make sense. And they are vectors. I mean, this is, boom, vectors, because they're velocities. Something that's kind of important, they, you know, generally speaking, counterclockwise is positive. We'll talk more about that, but not something that's gonna bother you a lot. A lot of times they'll say, give me the speed, the tangential speed. And we know speed's a scalar, so the direction doesn't matter. So here's the deal. Let's say we have person A, and they're on the merry-go-round, you're at the playground. And we have person B. We'll use black ink for pers person B, call him person B. We'll call, I'll just say B for black, but B could be for blue words. Let's call this person A. <laughs> and let's say we spin the merry-go-round and person A goes from here to there. And person B, in the same amount of time, goes from there to there. Now, even before you took physics or AP physics, you know person B, and that fraction of a second covers a greater distance than person A, right? And the stopwatch starts and person A goes from here to there. So here's the deal. That distance they cover is the arc. So very important, the arc length velocity gets greater as the radius gets bigger. And actually that makes a ton of sense because if you look at the equation, right? V equals R omega. If R gets big, if the right-hand side of the equation gets big, that means the VT, the tangential velocity, has to get big as well. If R were to get small, then VT would get small as well. So very important. R and VT are directly related, okay? Now, if you're at point A, I'll do it in color blue right here, in the color blue. If you're at point A, you swept out angle theta. If you're at point B right here and you went from boom to boom, you still swept out angle theta. So, really important, VT depends on what radius you're at, where omega, if R gets big or R gets small, does not matter because omega is constant. And a lot of people will call omega W. It's not W, it's the, it's a lowercase Greek omega. Okay, so just make sure, when I was in college, I call it W in class once. And you might be like, that's not embarrassing. It's kind of embarrassing, because everybody goes omega. And you're like, that's 20 years ago, you're in college, you still think about that? Yeah, yeah, I do. So it's the Greek letter omega right there. And so we'll call that equation number two. Vt equals r omega. And I bet you know we're gonna, gonna go to finish. We have a kind of a position, we have our velocity equation, right? Position, velocity, and we're in uniform circular motion. We did it in kinematics, we're gonna do it right here. Now at position, velocity, we're gonna finish with acceleration. And actually, I'm just gonna switch pages right here. So, we have equation number two, which was VT. My chair is really squeaking today. Equals R omega. And like I've told you all year, sometimes I leave my vector signs off just because I get lazy. So we're gonna take the derivative with respect to time of equation two, d dt. That's a meter per second per second. So we're like, oh, a meter per second per second. That is a meter per second squared. So this is gonna come at, which is tangential acceleration. And the r comes along for the ride. This is a radian per second per second, which is a radian per second squared, which is angular acceleration. And something kind of cool, a symbol they use for angular acceleration is Greek letter alpha, like a little fish right there. So let's look at our labels real quick. We reason this out, this is a meter per second per second, so tangential acceleration is 
meter per second squared. And just to note, on your drawing right there, that's how fast the arc length is accelerating. So it's, if it's speeding up along the arc just like that. Right here, the radius is just the radius. There's your meters again, just a constant. And then angular acceleration, that'd be the acceleration of the angle right there as the angle picks up speed, okay? My wife and I did pottery and we used to have the, the pottery wheels and you'd step on the, like the gas pedal and the angular acceleration would increase it. If you pick it up, it'd start from rest and it increase. So we have this, it's radians per second squared. So that's angular acceleration. And just some things, you know, if you want to reason the same kind of logic out, if your radius goes up, your tangential acceleration goes up. If your radius goes down, your tangential acceleration goes down, okay? And for any point along the radius, boom, 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 your angular acceleration will be constant. You might want to picture like this because it's not like this person out here, all of a sudden they're gonna break away and accelerate more than this person right here. So it's the same reasoning right there, they sweep through the same angle in the same amount of time. That's kind of getting us started. Um, that's the terminology. And the next thing we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about what is a centripetal force. And the word centripetal means center pointing. So a centripetal force could be any force that points toward or away from the center of the circle. It could be tension if you have a rope. It could be friction if you have a racetrack. It could be gravity if you're going on a roller coaster. It could be normal force. Those are all examples of forces that could be centripetal forces, which are ones that point toward or away from the center of a circle. But that's a really good place to get started. As long as you have the big three equations, number this one, number three, I almost forgot. Those are just to kind of get the parts of the circle down and to kind of talk about the important things right there. All right, so there we go. I hope you enjoy.